Hello there and welcome back to the second part of the Mental Health for Tradies conversation that I'm having as part of Tradies National Health Month here in Australia. Uh, that is all of August actually, guys. So if you guys know anybody or if you're having any issues, please by all means reach out. There are lots of people that want to help and this um, conversation that I've had with uh, Nick Sutherland from MindFit and the boys from Trademutt, it's uh, Dan, Alan and Edward Ross uh, is certainly a testament to that. There's a lot of people out there that want to help guys. So if you're having any issues, please, by all means, just pick up the phone. Um, there's also other resources that you can look into. Uh, there's the guys across at Mates in Construction that do a fantastic job. And look, guys, even if you want to pick up the phone or send an email through to uh, inquiries at the site shed, we're always willing to help you. Um, so please don't be struggling. Just pick up the phone, have a conversation. Uh, guys, anyway, this is the second part of that conversation. Um, I might add as well, the boys have um, from Trademark are giving away a couple of their shirts, which are, if, I don't know if you may or may not have seen them, but they're absolutely awesome. So again, this is all in uh, all to promote mental health. So head across to the Facebook group, get a hold of that. Um, you have to be in that group to be part of the competition. Uh, Nick's also offered a free one-on-one -on -one session um, as part of that prize. So by all means, head across there and get a hold of that. And if you're not part of that community, you should be because it is epic. Anyway, I uh, look forward to seeing you in there. Enjoy this second part of the conversation. If you have any, com uh, any questions or you want any follow-up, done or if you've got you know you want to reach out to us personally by all means please as i said do that um otherwise enjoy and do me a favor if you think anyone would benefit from this go and share that with them because it might be the life you save the site shared podcast is made possible because of tradie web guys creators of beautiful websites designed specifically for tradies and contractors if you're tired of dealing with web designers that have no idea about your industry then head across to tradiewebguys.com.au and reach out like many companies from all over the place, you'll be very glad you did. Giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. So we may as well move on to a little bit about the solution the solution now. So we've spoken about the problem. Of course, um, for those who haven't heard the first part here, we're just talking about mental health within the trades. <clears throat> and um, we've, had, we've had a good conversation with uh, Nick, Daniel and Edward about some of the problems that exist that can lead to, you know, the um, to mental health states declining. Um, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about the solution. And so, I mean, obviously there's no one one solution fits all in this scenario. I mean, I'm guessing it's obviously. I mean, from my experience with with um, with mental health and people that have had issues with it, like it seems it seems to be even from the onset. You know, it's a hard thing to sometimes diagnose because everything everyone seems so different. Yeah, but the problem's never what we think the problem is. The problem's our inability to right. maneuver around or work our way through or overcome whatever yeah. life has put before us. So that makes sense. You know, the 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 bloke drives and 20 k's under the spare limit in front of you isn't the problem your reaction to right. him is the issue so in a sense there is a, a, solu a solution for everyone because there's these fundamental things that we can all do and practice each and every day that is going to maintain a, a really you know healthy and high state of um mental health so yeah it's just it's just about learning these things and you know, i was talking to ed and that earlier and when we're driving down to my joint about everything's a stimulus and we can either react to it mindlessly or we can learn how to choose to respond to it and and be more conscious of the decisions and choices that we're making so you know if you choose to be angry then then that's all good and well but if you're just reactively angry then that's an issue and that that needs attending to so I'd like to maybe just um, talk to Dan and Edward a little bit about. So when we're talking about the solution, there's obviously a couple of um, a couple of sides to this equation here. One is obviously the person who's having the mental health issues themselves. But then, as we spoke about before, you know, obviously society plays quite a large part in um, in the solution as well. Perhaps even a bigger part. So. I'm curious, guys, you know, being that you're out there now, you know, um, with this merchandise and you're um, promoting mental health, but you're effectively promoting it to people that may not necessarily be the ones that are suffering from it. Sorry, suffering from poor mental health. Nick, should clarify. <laughs> I'm just wondering what your guys' experience is or what you guys think would be a good way to attack that side of the equation in dealing with people, you know, that aren't necessarily in that position themselves, but have influence. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing is 
yeah, basically just educating people. So, um, you know, as we've said, Dan and I are not professionals in this area, you know, like we're just two guys want to make a change and we're, you know, siding with blokes like Nick and just gaining tools that we can send out uh, with our shirts so people can be better educated around how to have these conversations. Yeah. Like, for instance, my um, mother-in-law-to-be has got one of our shirts on today and she's um, doing these things they call hot shots where they go out to the mines and, and drop stuff off from okay. Kingsworth out to um, Chinchilla. And yep. uh, she said she was at the IGA um, there today uh, and the lady behind the counter um, at the IGA um, asked her about the shirt and then Sally told her that it was, a, you know, what trademark was and, and what we're about and, and, and Sally said, and Sally's actually a counsellor, um, and, and Sally said that this lady actually asked for a card and would like to have a, a counselling session. Wow. So, like, you know, that's pretty powerful. Yeah. That just Otherwise, they wouldn't it, have had that conversation. Yeah, the catalyst around the beginning of it. So, like, um, for instance, for yeah, anything else that we've sort of looked at um, and seen of people doing stuff around mental health, um, a lot of blokes aren't going to reach out and try and learn that because of the way it is perceived at the moment that it's a, it's a weakness, blah, blah, blah. But if we can make it um, something not cool but something that mm. people aren't afraid of yeah. through our work shirts, then that's the beginning of the change and it's just a flow-on effect from there. So then we can just keep pushing the message through our, through our company and it's pretty cool. So what about on the other side? Like what about somebody that, you know, walks into the IGA and doesn't have a shirt on and somebody's there and they're having an issue and they'd like to speak to a counsellor, but there's no indicator there, there's no catalyst. Like what is something that, you know, we can do proactively, um, you know, without necessarily the bright, loud shirts because there's a lot of people out there listening, you know, like how do we start that conversation? Well, that's the, that's the, I think that probably the, the more scary side of things is that, is that this is such a silent issue um not like physical injuries where you can see someone wearing a you know a plaster cast or you know a, a moon boot or something like that is you just can't you just can't see it so i think um on that side of things what is super important is to is, is your relationships and it's to maintain really really close and strong relationships with people around you who you trust you know your friends and your family and to be and to be super aware of the fact like it's not hard to pick up the phone for someone you haven't spoken to for a while and ask them you know the question how are they going or you know you actually yeah. uh, just like actually have a chat you know i guess people that you don't know and that you know may not be wearing a bright shirt that you just can't see the signs that that's probably a difficult situation but i think that's it's back on all of us to make maintain our personal relationships and look out for those around us who who we care about because you know that's that's a, it's a it's a super simple measure that we can all take in all our daily lives across all our relationships um, that can be super effective you know so we'll never know the power of a phone call sometimes simply picking up the phone going for a beer having a coffee whatever it, it mm. just it can save a life it mean, mean the world to someone you know and 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 the thing is that I know is that that people inherently want to help, you know. As soon as as soon as you can identify that someone isn't right, then all anyone wants to do is help. No, no one, no one wants to sit around and you know and just let someone who's vulnerable go by the wayside. It's just not, it's mm. not, not how, not how we inherently operate. I don't think so. Yeah, but, but that is a tough one because it's so, so silent. So what about boys? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've all have. Um, input into this one, Nick, especially you, I imagine. But, you know, in that scenario where you're standing in a room full of builders and everyone's telling you how good everything is, but underneath the skin, everyone's sort of really thinking, fuck my life, this is the worst thing ever. How do you go about starting up that conversation in a way that's not going to necessarily, I suppose, damage their ego, but just you know, talk the truth, you know, like how do you, what's the best approach to that? Because I mean, everyone that's listening to this podcast is going to be in that situation. Everyone has mates that are tradies. Everyone spends time in, in, um, you know, site sheds, pardon the pun, like at work, you know, they all hang out with tradies on the weekends and everyone's having these conversations. But then how do you really, how do we go about cutting through the shit? 
Well, I think like in that specific situation that I spoke about um, in that instance, it would have been so easy for me to just sort of, you know, have spoken about my own experiences about, you know, the fact that oh, I um, think things are okay, you know, I had a, had a big job lined up that, that's just fallen through. So, you know, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the boys next week. Right. It's, it's a little bit touch and go. Like you, you don't need to, you probably don't need to, you know, completely kill the mood or anything like that. But I think talking, having having the courage to talk about and be real about your own experiences then will definitely give give other guys the, the, the courage and the power to, to talk themselves. And and one thing is we know is once you get blokes talking, you can't shut them up. It's just about breaking <laughs> it's just about breaking that breaking that surface, you know what I mean? And and, yeah. and then they just erupt and there you go, you're off. So it's just getting through that initial discomfort though, as you said, like breaking through the surface. Uh, it's it's gonna take a little bit of uncomfortable moments, but you know, once you're through it then and you start getting into it and you're like oh this is actually so much easier than i imagined and mm. you know there's a great quote that we suffer more in our heads than we do in reality and we sit there just overthinking things and instead of if we just went okay it's going to be awkward or weird or strange or whatever but it's it's sort of it's going to get me into where i need to be then yeah just just jump in and see where you end up and how about the, and how about the scenario that you know you actually put your hand up in that room full of builders as a builder yourself and say yeah nah you know I'm 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 scratching around I'm looking for work something's falling through mm. and there's every chance there's someone in that room who's going to be like oh mate perfect timing I've got something on the cards that you can move straight onto for me that I can't manage you know right, what I mean right like, yeah that is that exact situation that by mm. putting your hand up is like the most likely situation that someone else in that room is going to turn around and be able to and be able to help you you know what I mean yeah and it's a r- ridiculous thing about it so we chatted last night about you know you, you can lead a horse to water but you can't make it drink and that's a great example of putting a hand up asking for help if if no one knows that you need help, then it's really difficult for anyone right. to help you. Yeah. So that's where you've got to sort of be accountable and, and own you know, your own health and happiness and well-being. It's interesting because um, although we were talking about how social media, I suppose, is you know is, is causing a lot of these issues, and I, I completely agree with you. You know, we've we've got a very engaged community on Facebook of basically people, just tradespeople, but qualified tradespeople. You know, people that are sort of at a certain level in their business, and the conversations within that group are fantastic. But they are all conversations around help and you know and it's got to the point where we don't even really have to um initiate the conversations in the group because people are asking things that they want help with and they're taking on board advice of peers that have been down that path and walked it themselves so it's effectively quite a similar thing right Mm. it just becomes the norm you know once you and that's the shift that we're trying to create is you know, getting creating a new normal essentially for blokes, and instead of the alpha male, you know, I think I'm strong, and you know, I'm going to call you an idiot or you know, soft cock or whatever. It's it's coming, it's changing, it's shifting, and and you know, there's something called the omega male now. It's um, you know, coming at that place from being more compassionate, and if we can have those discussions on a more regular basis, then yeah, it just it, it becomes normal, like in your Facebook group. Yeah, cool. I mean, it, it's just something that I noticed anyway because I, I kind of resonate with that, you know, everyone's standing around talking about how everything's great when really it's not. But I feel like when, when you're in a community of people that are all there for a similar thing, um, it feels like that that, that, that barrier is not as obvious. Yeah, and it's pretty pretty funny like, um, you know, you only need a, a few blokes to, you know, lead by example right. and, you know, and, and then the floodgates open and that's – and all that's uh, – I imagine that's happening in, in your situation is that the community's made it okay and to, to you know ask for help and to and to bring things up and to talk about things and and uh, you know as soon as it's normalized and it's okay then 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 it's life you know life goes on it's but perfect. i also think there's a lack of community too like 100%. as in now you know people are stuck in their own little worlds um and yeah touching back on you know like social media stuff like that people aren't you know going to they are parts of part of clubs anymore you know what i mean like you know, an example of like bowls you know like there wouldn't be a bowl, there'd be hardly a bowls club left open in brisbane you know what i mean like that'd be a sense of community like people would go there and people would just talk have a few schooners have a, have a rolled bowls or something like that but you know they felt entrenched in a community and people would feel safe in that environment and then would talk about stuff right. um or um and, and you don't really have that 
especially in the trade industry, you've just got a group of blokes you're working with every day. Um, you're either, you know, you, you're close to them, but you're, sometimes you're good mates with them, sometimes you're not. Um, and then you don't have really anything outside of that unless you're like involved in sport or, or something like that and you, you have blokes around you can lean on. So do you reckon there's like on a slightly more macro level or playing field, there could be something that, you know, the principal contractor or the builder or if you're, you know, in maintenance and emergency, it could be, your, you know, like a service manager or there should be a responsibility on those people or maybe, I wouldn't say responsibility, but maybe some um, education towards those 100%. people where they can create that environment a little bit more. Just be aware of it. It's like what Nick was saying um, earlier. Um, today about you know knowledge is power and the more people that we can um, get in front of and, and and push more information into them and, and get them to have, get that light bulb moment and you know for you know if there was a boss to be like wow right okay if someone rings me up and um, they're having a tough time um, I can just like mate you know just take a couple of days you know this is someone you should go and see or mm. you know look after yourself these are some ways you should you know try and go about things to to increase your mental well-being and then you know even just you know on a Monday morning you know everyone rocks in hey guys how's everyone going you know like where's everyone at is everyone feeling you know good so I have any troubles if you do don't have to put your hand up here in front of everyone just come over chat to me whenever stuff like that you know basically just um, normalizing it and people not having to feel stuck in in the corner and and you know finding it hard to to seek help it sort of takes quite a discerning per- well maybe not i mean i was going to say it takes a discerning person to to sort of highlight those you know people that may not may not be on the right track but then again it's probably more of a paradigm shift isn't it like at the end of the day i think with business you know as business owners and managers and that kind of thing you get so caught up in you know in the deliverables and running the job and making sure that everything's happening correctly that you sort of lose track of you know these other things and you know how people are feeling and what mental state they're in all that kind of stuff that that often come as a result of the whip get being cracked too hard. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, and it's and, and and that's exactly right. You know, we're in situations where quite often, you know, like we live job to job. You know what I mean? And and most of the time, you're competing against other other building companies, other tradies to win jobs. You know, so so in a sense, you know, you're competing against each other on one level, but you're sort of so focused on keeping the work coming in, keeping the boys busy, organising things. You know, you go home, you got to keep the wife happy you got the kids you got to put food on the table where's where's the time for yourself and and yeah and and where's the time to sort of implement some of these measures when when the crux of business is cash cash flow and keeping and keeping the business you know keeping the business afloat like but i've got i've got a question for that though like what's the common denominator between you know your relationship with your missus your work um your mates what what's the common denominator in all those things all those components of your life it's you. you. You know, we talk about cash flow and how important that is. If you break down, then cash flow is going to be irrelevant. You know, if you if you can't if you get your mental health into a space where you cannot leave the house, then you know, cash flow is going to be the last of your problems because you go into survival mode. So, I think a barrier to um, what we're trying to achieve is people are so stuck in their own things that they're not really in a position to help other people sometimes and we can't be mindful of other people as well yeah and i don't i sorry i wasn't um i didn't mean to take away from that i agree completely i was just saying that i feel like there's like it's more the, the paradigm shift in i mean obviously if you're unwell and you can't go to work the work can't get done but yet you know if you look at you know a business you look at a business kpis it's very i can't imagine you'll see too many kpis in any organization that talk about how well some how good somebody's mental health is or physical or ironic, physical though? health it, it's completely ironic yeah like i mean the way to make money is to to be a sustainable person you know to to be able to turn up to work every day and be proactive and productive and and all of that and that comes from being mentally healthy so uh, yeah, I think it should be a priority uh, for good business practice. This kind of ties into a question that I wanted to ask you, Nick, when we're talking about what the solution is. And I know you're heavily involved in these programs and you know helping people through these stages. Is there something that I suppose people is, – is there anything out there that either you've created or somebody's created that can address that the problem at that level where you can talk about, well, okay, sure, productivity is, you know, is, a, is a major – is one of the major um, – 
tri- uh, triggers and KPI performance indicators, you know, when you're talking about a, a business's success. However, you know, what contributes to to that is mental health. Sure. Like how do you frame up how do you frame up a program that educates business owners, business managers around the fact that if their teams if their team they've got a team that's full of people that have, you know, poor mental health or poor physical health, then the bottom line's gonna be slammed. Well, there's a great example on my website. It's um, comes from a client of mine called Ryan and his missus kicked me through the door. You know, we talk about um, the solution, but another barrier is blokes and not asking for help. So then Mrs. has to kick him through the door, which happened with Ryan. Uh, And he came all the way down to Mornington from Swan Hill to see me once. And then we started working on Skype. So I've got clients all over Australia and a few international ones now. And and we can do this work with the technology. But you jump on and you, you you listen to Ryan. And he's now become a mental health advocate in in a way because he states in his testimonial that um, you know he thought work was the issue and he realised it was himself and he's a much better businessman now because he's prioritised things. He makes time for his you know, mental health and well being. I said to him one day, mate, I want you to go in and spend the first fifteen minutes at work sitting at your desk doing nothing. And he just laughed at me and called me every name under the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and the next the next session we had, he Skyped me and he was pissing himself laughing before I could even say hi. And I'm like, what's going on? And he's like, you bastard. And I'm like, what? And he goes, that was the most productive 15 minutes I've spent uh, <laughs> because I just got to sit and observe. And instead of being caught up in it, and that's that's what everyone is, mate. They're, they're all yeah. caught up in everything. And when you're caught up in things, think of a fish in a net. It's caught in the net. Its instinct is to start struggling. Yeah. So if we can stop being caught up in everything and stop being so money focused and money driven, you know, the the definition of happiness is to be content. Mm-hmm. So, so, so many business owners, and, and you know, I love working with business blokes because they start a business going, uh, I, you know, I just want to you know, get into a position where I can spend more time with the family, but the tail ends up wagging the dog and they actually end up doing 70 hours and relationships break down and you know, then they break down and then they wonder what the fuck happened to them. So they've got to work smarter instead of harder. We interrupt this podcast today to talk to you very quickly about Trady Web Guys content creation program. That program has been designed specifically for trade-based organizations as a way that you guys as trade business owners can start creating content that enables you to engage better with your customers and your potential customers. It will enable you to build trust and build rapport because what you're doing is you're investing in educating them. Biggest problem that we see with our customers today is that they're not regularly updating their websites. And that's a problem because first of all, the search engines are looking for that. And second of all, potential customers are also looking for it. Trady Web Guys content creation program has been specifically designed to help you get regular relevant content on your website consistently every month. We know that it's hard when you're out there on the tools and we know that sometimes you don't always have the time to be able to do these things yourself. So we're taking it off your hands for you. It's a service that we're offering for you guys. We want to make sure that you're getting this done because we know how important it is. Anyway, head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash content, fill in the form, and one of our representatives will come back to you. So I suppose we can segue now a little bit into you know what what things could look like in the in the end. We'll talk a bit about the outcome. I'm happy for whoever whoever wants to chime in here because um, I suppose this is something that if <laughs> I mean I know Nick, you've certainly experienced this firsthand. But I think a lot of the people out there would be curious. And when we talk about selling the benefits, what could life be like if you know people actually started managing this stuff properly? Well, that's that's no coincidence that uh, improved mental health equals better life you know each bloke listening as i said before is a common denominator in all the components of his life so when he improves uh, his relationships his productivity his finances his health uh all of that stuff improves too so mm. um yeah i guess you know uh, isn't it a weird thing to be you know we spoke before about being ashamed of mental health and isn't it weird to be ashamed of something that we have like it's, you know, who's ashamed of physical health? Who, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like, like I'm ashamed of my a, arm. Exactly. It's such a weird <laughs> thing. I struggle you should, to get you my head ashamed of that gut of yours, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, office gut, I've seen yours. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I mean, when we talk about what's an ideal outcome, I think it's it's for blokes to, you know, let's simplify it because it is a pretty complex issue if we make it one. If we can simplify it and go, right, I have mental health so I can stop being afraid of it. It's actually a good thing I have mental health. I need it. Mm-hmm. I have to take ownership of it. You know, I, I have to actually proactively attend to my mental health and well-being. I am the most important thing in my life because without me here in this capacity, everything else just falls away. Everything else drops all the way down the priority list. Mm. So it actually makes sense for me to be proactive in my mental health because I then want to be a better husband and dad and role model to my kids. And, you know, imagine handing down a healthy way of thinking to your kid as a as a you know, an emotional family heirloom instead of a toxic and angry and bitter and twisted sort of mindset. And, you know, which one would you rather hand down to your kids? So, mm. yeah, you know, Ryan talks about how when he got up from work, he was so angry, but it, you know, he was angry because everything else was imposing on what he thought was important to him, which was work. When we had to change that completely, and he now realizes that you know, he had his priorities all out of whack. And now he's playing golf on a Friday afternoon and he's just he's just so much happier. Mm. And all of a sudden, you know, the business is more profitable. So, I mean, do the math. Mm. Interesting. And so, you know, looking at, I suppose, uh, from an organizational perspective as well, do, do you feel like, I know I've been in situations at work where there's been, you know, that one bad apple and it's made the whole, <laughs> the whole fruit bowl rot. <laughs> do you yeah. reckon that... Like, I mean, obviously, if companies had a better approach to mental health across the board, then it would be addressing that individual, for, well, for the better part anyway. I mean, obviously, there's, there's not always, it's not always going to be a fit, but I just feel like if there was a way that, you know, it would be, it was implemented throughout the organization, almost like, a, you know, as part of their culture, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm changing the culture of the business at the moment. This dude, an ex, a, a client of mine is running a business with 45 people and he asked me to go out there and help him to change the culture of his business. So it's bang on what we're talking about is, you know, changing the perception and how we look at things. So that, that bad apple is a bad apple for a reason. You know, then they didn't wake up and just decide to be a bad apple. There's something happening below the surface. So instead of judging them and condemning them and putting them down and, being demonstrative towards them, we can actually say, "Hey, uh, reflect to them. This is this is what we we see is happening. Do you know that this is happening? Yeah. And if so, you know, let's talk about. It. Let's let's learn. Let's figure things out." And we had it in the army. You know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And we'd all go for a pack run together, and there'd always be stragglers down the back, and the strong runners were up the front. And we had to learn that that way wasn't effective and efficient because we just you know yeah. all of a sudden instead of starting off as a tight knit group we're all suddenly you know strewn over a couple of hundred meters so yeah we had to put the strong runners and the the weak runners in the middle of the group and work with them and support them and continue as a unit yeah, so right. it's it's changing your methodology it's changing your perception it's changing your approach and you know change takes time so it's all about you know it comes back to learning I so with an organized, yeah. I imagine there's like so many listeners out there right now thinking that's so, like it's so relevant to their business. Like there's probably that one person in there who's probably not productive. Or I mean, to be honest with you, I've been in a situation myself when I when the last job shutter that I had, and I remember I was just, <laughs> I would get to work in the morning, I would just be so absolutely pissed off, and I'd spend the entire time driving to work thinking up conversations in my head that had never happened but that could potentially happen and how I would combat them, like arguments, things like that. And I was like, I talk about poor mental health. Like I was just losing you're gonna, it. You're going to be spent by the time you get to work. <laughs> oh, it was exhausting. <laughs> but then I, I but, think – Okay, but that was – that, that was you know, going back to this concept of being responsible for your happiness, Yeah, you chose to remain in that job. So it wasn't – you know, the problem wasn't the people at work. You know, it's it's that we get into this rigid thinking and rigid mindset. And when I talk about the bamboo and the oak tree as a metaphor, and people think the oak tree is so big and strong, but when a strong wind comes through, it's going to blow over and the bamboo is going to survive. So we really start need to be practice this flexibility as well and start, you know, changing and adapting and and moving instead of just expecting everything around us to change to suit our needs and to make us happy we need to go and proactively 
make ourselves happy by changing your environment, changing your job, making decisions and choices and, and keep moving. You know, when you get stuck, it's if picture someone, you know, in quicksand, once again they go into struggle mode. So that's essentially yeah. what you were doing. It was you're in you're in struggle mode and spending all this energy before it gets to work. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. I know that, um, that that attitude, mate, that you're talking about, having those conversations with yourself in the car, like I've been there as well, you know, I know that exact <laughs> feeling, you know, and you're sort of some of the best conversations I've had have been with myself in the car. And, uh, <laughs> and, and you're sort of and you're just, and you're just making, up, making up complete shit that yeah. like, you know, is like no absolute no reason, you know, for for that to be the case or why that would happen. You sort of, you know, work yourself up into a tears and you know, and then you get to the point where you're sort of you're waiting for it to happen, you know what I mean? You're just, you're yeah. just ready for, for shit to go. I, I did it as well in the army and that was part of the reason why I ended up where I ended up. And what I now know is that what you're talking about there is called an unhelpful thinking style. So there's all these, you know, you asked before about content and everything and, and the boys are not going to create all this content, but um, there's a downloadable PDF on my website, which has got a list of unhelpful thinking styles. So you can see it's black and white thinking or jumping to conclusions or mind reading. All of these things are, are very unhelpful ways of, uh, of thinking because then, yeah, you work yourself into a right old tiz before you get to work. It's funny, like over the years and largely through you know, running my own businesses and things like that, I've learned, and, and I, actually this, this is another thing I suppose which we haven't really covered off on, but um, in your experience, is there certain types of personalities or certain types of traits that are more, say, conducive to having those sort of internal conversations or it, like is there certain people that are more willing to go look for help, you know, if, if you're looking at, say, a disc profile or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I think it all comes down to emotional intelligence. Uh, oh, yeah. you know, people talk about how smart you are. Well, there's a difference between being intellectually smart and emotionally smart. So right. emotional intelligence is basically being self-aware and then being able to self-regulate. Mm. So to manage your emotional states and emotional experiences. Mm. So the more emotionally intelligent someone is, the more you know, there's, there's neuroplasticity is all the rage these days. And that's that flexibility I was talking about. So yeah, people and emotional intelligence is, is something that we can develop. So, you know, is there a certain type? No, there's, there's a closed mind and they're, they're really difficult to work with because they think they're strong-minded when, in fact, they're rather uh, emotion. Yeah, well, emotionally, I don't want to use the word weak, but they're holding on to this closed-minded belief out of fear, basically. So they shut themselves off to any other pathways, and that's through a reduced emotional intelligence. Like I look at that scenario where we're talking about, you know, the having those conversations in your own head. What did you call it? Sorry, Nick, it was. Um, That's an un unhelpful thinking style. Unhelpful thinking, yeah. So, um, yeah. and then I'll and and I've thought about this so many, and I've spoken about it on the podcast before many times as well. Because I always <laughs> find it quite comical when I look back on it. Because now I just I never have those sort of things. Like I was wondering, like on reflection, you know, there were certain things that were happening within, you know, the the organisation that were making me get into that frame of mind. So although yes, it was I was I was certainly not helping the the situation myself because I didn't know how to you know from a business point of view um, if the business um, managers owners directors whatever um, across the board you know if everyone sort of had a better understanding of how to keep everybody you know or how to I suppose at least ask the question and you know get get the right feedback from people and make sure everyone's okay then it, I probably wouldn't have had that same been in that same sort of thought process. Oh yeah, I hear what you're saying. And it's very understandable. But the the words you just used then was work made me. And as soon as you say that, you're yeah, well, you're giving your power away. You're handing over the keys to your happiness to work. And me and the boys were speaking about this again last night. Is if you're reliant on X, Y, and Z happening in that external world that we all live in, then it's a really dangerous way. But mm. if you can learn to be inherently happy and have A, B, and C in order inside of you, then there's a massive difference between that Band-Aid happy and being inherently happy. So, mm. you know, I hear it all the time. You know, oh, she, she makes me so angry or that makes me so anxious or that makes me so nervous. Yeah, And it's all, it's all bullshit because – Everything that you're talking about is just stimulus. Right. That's all. That's all it is. And you have a. You can choose to have a response to that. And yeah, you know, this comes from 
a psychiatrist who went through the Holocaust and survived Auschwitz and, and all those terrible tragedies. And he basically came out, and, and this is not new, so it's it's in Stoic philosophy and Buddhist philosophy and everything as well. It's basically there's a, a space between stimulus and response, and in that space lies your power to choose how you respond to whatever the stimulus is. Mm. And it's weird that the same part of our brain lights up, not to get too nerdy for all your listeners, but it's interesting because the same part of your brain lights up when you're anxious or when you're excited. The only difference is how you process that experience. So, you know, if you and I were to go bungee jumping and you started, you know, shitting yourself, getting really nervous, I'd I'd choose to get excited because I see it as an opportunity to get out of my comfort zone and have some fun. So it's exactly the same stimulus, but there's a a, a different re- you react and I respond. If that makes sense? Yeah, no. Well, it does actually. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. I suppose. So it's 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 really disempowering for for you to say that makes me yeah anything. And and so if you can be mindful of of that the semantics and the language that you use, and you know you're halfway home. So you're saying like when you're standing on the edge of that platform waiting yeah. to jump and, you know, one of you is shitting yourself, but then you, Nick, are thinking, oh, this is going to be bloody awesome. Yeah, right. Like there's obviously still going to be a massive part of you that's shitting yourself. Like, you know, you're talking about, you know, how, how do you get control of, of those? Like how do you switch that, you know? Well, it's a, it's a nervous excitement. As I said, the, the only thing that's different is one person sees it as something to be afraid of. The other person sees it as an opportunity. So... You know, to relate it to the traders that are listening, you've you've got a quote for a job. A lot of blokes can be, oh, shit, I really need this and operate out of fear. And it's all of a sudden something to be afraid of. And I need this, I need this, I need this. Where another approach could be, uh, it's just an opportunity for me. And you become so much lighter within yourself. So, yeah, look at things as an opportunity or something to be afraid of. It's, um, it's interesting. I know that because, sorry, sorry Matt, because like that, that, that that situation there where you're quoting a job you know and you think shit i need it like it's a it's a real that is a real life you know situation every day that tradies face we face all the time and it's not you're not just thinking about for yourself it's for you know all the boys who are relying on you at work as well who who you know who 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 need jobs as well you know so i think yeah and, and that can be a really stressful situation for you know for, for a small business owner but this, like with physical health, you have to go and dedicate time to go to the gym and look at yourself in the mirror and pump your guns up, right? But with mental health, there's so many opportunities every single day for us to practice these things once you know them and learn them and become aware of them. Now, there's all these micro opportunities throughout the day, and that's that's one instance, you know, quoting for a job. Okay, it's just an opportunity for me to practice sitting here in this space. The, the quoting for the job is just a stimulus. How do I actually want to choose to be feeling at the moment mm. compared to just mindlessly on autopilot reacting to everything around you? I reckon that would help. Yeah, I reckon that would help a lot of tradies. Yeah, being able to get get a handle on that as well, because that yeah, yeah. That's, that's an everyday situation. To give what you said just some credibility as well, I know the um the Chinese character for crisis is also the same character for opportunity. So that goes yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. So <clears throat> I didn't know that. There you go. You can use that if you want. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to quote you on that one. <laughs> Me, <I'm> a- <laughs> But uh, but I think this is this is it. Like you know, none of us know everything, and I don't I, I don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room because right. I always want to keep learning and growing and evolving. And you know, personal development, um, thanks to probably America, is is seen as something to laugh at. You know, oh bloody you know, personal development, self help crap. But the irony is, you know, we're sort of we're all meant to sort of grow. We're all meant to develop. We're all meant to continue learning and if we don't then we just become stuck and stale and outdated and then we wonder why life's shit and life's not shit you're just shit at living it i can't remember who it was who said this but um it's eluded me a bit but it was uh i'm paraphrasing here so bear with me but it was along the lines of um personal developments like showering you don't just do it once and and say it's done (laughs) (laughs) well yeah i had one the other day was don't live the same year 75 times and call it a life. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, and, and just but I, I really love linking mental health back to physical health because, as the boy said earlier, you know, you can't see mental health, you can't see thoughts, feelings and emotions as they are. So it's easy to, to link it to 
mental health uh, to physical health. So just as you can't go to the gym once and do a couple of push-ups and sit-ups and chin-ups and whatever and expect to walk out with a looking like you know buff Rick, you can't just have a, an expectation. <laughs> that <made> to, it awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's Nick's alter ego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saw me posing in the uh, mirror this morning, didn't you? Uh, did you see me see you? Yeah, I saw you see me. Such a creep. Uh, yeah, but it's the same thing. You know, you can't you can't eat one salad and expect yeah. to be nutritiously healthy as well. So mm. all of this stuff comes back to to best practice. You know, yeah. have a think about what I actually want to be achieving. I want to be a great trader. I want to be a great boss. I want to be a great hubby, father, all that sort of stuff. Okay, well, before I can be great at any of that, I have to be great within myself. That that's going to take effort and investment and all that stuff. I've, I've watched more than I've watched more than one person over the past couple of days when the Nick has said has is you know like and they got compared mental health to physical health and same like you Matt you know and same for us like we I've never thought about it like that and that's that that in itself is a is a bit of a light bulb moment you know. It is. It's just. It's. It's. You know. Exactly like your physical health. You just don't see it. You know. And like, yeah, that, that example that Nick talks about of going to the gym. You know, just go once. Like, I think that's. It's so true. And that just that. You know, example in itself makes it so clear. And and I guess to me, there's a light bulb moment now. And I'm like, well, it's yeah, so true. I'm going to have to invest way more time into my own mental health because. Yeah, it's we've all yeah. got it, and I, I think it's, 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 well, it's important. I mean, for me as well, like I know that my physical health has a massive impact on my mental health. Like I know if I don't go to the gym and you know spend an hour or two at the gym, then like and then I just remain in this angry work state sometimes if shit's gone wrong at work. <laughs> but when I go to the gym and I'm you know, working with my trainers and all that kind of stuff, I feel like uh, when I when I get out of there, I'm in a much better mental mental state than when I went in. Yeah, but you you and your the people listening right now can grab a pen and paper draw three interlocking circles just to back up what you're saying Mm -hmm. one's physical health one's mental health one's nutritional health and score yourself out of 10 in each of those components and then add them all up and give yourself an an overall score out of 30 and when i do this with clients so often it's 10 or under so look at it like a car you know v6 car you're only actually running on two cylinders right and yet you have an expectation that you should be productive, you should be a great husband, you should be happy, you should be a great mate, have time for your kids and be all happy. So we're really setting ourselves up to fail in all of those components of our life by not attending to ourselves, by not making ourselves a priority, by not, you know, we actually become unproductive if we work more than, I think it was 40 something hours. Yeah. So for those those blokes that, you know, oh, I've just got to work harder, it's it's a really out of date uh, philosophy to live by. Yeah. And have a think about you know, going back to the physical health. If you break your arm, what happens? There's a process that you go through. Yeah. So, like healing. Yeah. Well, you go to the hospital, you get an x ray, you get a sling, you get a cast, people sign it. There's a, you know, then you go and rehab the arm. Right. Have a think about when you, when you, you know, um, your girlfriend dumps you, for instance, right? that's an emotional injury or an emotional trauma, but there's not a process in place that people go through the same as they do their physical health. So then they become wounded and, and mm. I use the term very literally, emotionally retarded. Their, their emotional growth is retarded right. in a very literal sense because they're stuck in that and that trauma, and if you know, akin to breaking your leg, emotionally you're going to walk with a limp for a long, long time. And yeah. when you when you don't run, you know, when you when you're not operating really well, then you beat yourself up and call yourself an idiot, which just compounds the problem. So we're getting close to wrapping this up now, gents. I just suppose I'd like to hear, um, or maybe maybe hear a bit about some actionable steps or things that you know we can do out there to. to Sort of back up what we've spoken about, and maybe make a make a difference. Buy a trade much shirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> buy my shit. Uh, uh, no, no. Definitely actually, I think the boys I think. the boys have actually offered as well for the listeners out there. They're going to do a bit of a giveaway. So um, get in the uh, Facebook community in our Facebook community, and we'll be doing a, a giveaway for some awesome trade much shirts. So um, yeah, you'll have to be in the group to do that. So head across to uh, the site shared private group. You have to request to get in. If you're not in, if you're not in, you should be. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think off the back of that, off the back of those shirts, mate, the one of the biggest, you know, things that are that 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 we want to push is is it's it's purely just the the simplest step 
that everyone can do to just begin to address this. And it's and it's what we touched on before. It's it's showing empathy and it's and it's actually giving a giving a shit, you know, actually mm. giving a shit and empathizing and listening and like what we say, like what you know, the the the, the cultural shift that we're trying to create sort of with our with our workwear brand is um you know, you, you're taking on a responsibility by, by by wearing one of these shirts to to sort of say that you are both open to talking and listening and affecting change. Being being a person that can you know lead by example and and actually and actually affect this. The empathy and listening is is just such a simple simple step that we can all do just to just to just to scratch the surface how about this for a challenge to all the listeners out there actually maybe we can tie this into the uh into the shirt giveaway as well boys what if um we ask people to reach out to a friend or a colleague and have a conversation with them and then post in the group basically some of their feedback and i love it i think yeah. it's great you know i think it's so it's so easy to, to pick up the phone you know and you know just just go for a beer have a coffee whatever just yeah i think that's fantastic you know such right. an easy that- step I keep hearing, um, I keep hearing Dan say, yeah, there's something we want to push, and I think that's part of the problem as well is that we have to push this under blokes, and no mm. one likes having stuff pushed on them. So mm. something, something actionable would be to to pick this up and start running with it for us, and mm-hmm. and let us start flowing instead of us forcing it. You know, down people's throats because that's the last thing we want to be doing. Yeah. So sort of meet us halfway and work with us, um, and yeah, pick up the phone. Mm-hmm. It's it's going to be hard or awkward or different initially, perhaps. But once you once you push through that, um, yeah, you know, it's it's actually a really enjoyable experience. So give yep. it a try. So there you go, guys. Let's um let's get out there, pick up the phone, speak to somebody, do it now, do it when you're driving to work, do it when you're driving home, just. It doesn't have to take up a huge amount of time for you or be a massive inconvenience, but as you've heard, you know, it can make a huge difference. And if it can, you know, help one of your friends be in a better mental state or, you know, even in the worst scenario, if they're contemplating taking a even more, uh, <laughs> the next step of maybe, you know, suicide and things like that, then, you know, you could be the one that might be helped prevent that. So go on, give them a call and um, post your feedback and comments within the community. The boys are going to be in that group as well. So if you've got more questions or you want feedback on certain things, um, you can by all means get hold of them all in the, uh, in the group so um, gents I want to thank you for your time it's been fantastic thank you mate it was great thanks yeah no problems much, yeah, thanks, really for the, thanks for the opportunity anytime likewise I'd like to yeah thank you for your service to the industry and I know you guys are out there to make a big difference and um, we all very much appreciate it so keep up the good work and we're happy to help wherever we can in that regard thank you oh, awesome, mate. Right. on your legend thanks mate all right, guys. Again, if you uh, got any questions or you've got any follow-ups or you've got any feedback or anything like that, you can um, post those comments wherever you see this um, episode or wherever you hear this podcast. It might be on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever it is, uh, YouTube. You might see it in a Facebook comment. You might see it in a Twitter or Instagram comment, whatever it is. Just post some comments and we'll get them answered for you. Boys, that is a wrap-up for this series. So thank you again for your time. And um, we look forward to collaborating in the future and hearing more of your stories and watching you guys uh, – Watching you guys on the road to success. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Awesome, mate. Cheers. I appreciate Thanks, mate. it. Okay, that's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, you'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, That would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, Likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.